Hello ladies and welcome back to another educational video. For those of you guys new here, essentially what I do is I walk through everything that I'm thinking about, everything that I'm doing, so that you guys can see the consistencies across all my games and try to apply it to yourself. So, today we are playing an Emerald and we are playing against a Kennen Top, a matchup I'm not particularly fond of. So, let's jump into the action. As you can see, we have very high quality graphics because you guys were complaining that low quality graphics was not the play. So here we are. We're going to do very high from now on. Not a fan of it. My eyes kind of hurt. But again, it is to make the game a bit more enjoyable to watch. So against the ranged matchup, you still do the same thing. You control the brushes, but here's the one secret. When they auto a minion, you Q forward and then you auto them. So that means that they will go for the minion and you will get a free auto. So as you can see here, right there, he autos the minion. I Q forward. It's a very specific timing that you do have to find. And then you have to dodge his Q after. Ah, yeah. Okay, let's get level 2 here and just, just cheese him. Just run him down. So we are level 2, level 2 advantage. Just run him down. Just, just, just stand here, tank the minions. It is what it is. And we're just going to fight him. And he loses the trade. We're not going to go for the kill because we're not greedy. And we don't want to die to the tower because... The wave is pushing towards the cannon. If we die while the wave is pushing towards the cannon and we have no TP, we're double screwed. So what we're going to do here is we're going to push this wave and tower dive the cannon if he decides to stay. If he bases, we get a TP advantage, which is a massive W, which means on the bounce back when I kill him, he won't be able to TP back and he'll fall really far behind. So let's push out the wave here. Again, if he stays, I'm going to tower dive. If he bases, he probably TP'd. And can we tower dive him anyways? Probably not, huh? Okay, just, let's just take a base here. So let's clear this, uh, let's just base and we'll have the wave bounce back towards us. I'm pretty sure he TP'd even though my camera wasn't on the tower, but there was no way he got back in time. So we'll take the base and the wave will bounce back towards us and we'll grab a boots and refill potion here. Actually, no, we're gonna go long sword. Long sword, refill potion and head back to lane. And the reason why I don't think Boots is that valuable into ranged matchups is because you're not really using movement speed to beat someone. If this was Redekton Top, for example, or Garen or something along those lines, I would definitely go Boots there because the Boots is much more valuable than the extra AD. But in a ranged matchup, it comes down to your ability to stat check your opponent. And of course, Longsword helps you do that because it gives you more AD. So we grab the longsword and we come back and now we have an item advantage over Kennen. So all we have to do here is clear the wave, get level 4, make sure the wave... Oh yeah. I need to stop getting hit by those. So yeah, we're gonna try to clear the wave here, try to keep Kennen in the lane if possible. But if we can't keep the Kennen in the lane, we'll try to freeze. If we cannot freeze... Right here, we can go for it. Nice. Looks like we can hold the freeze here with an extra wave. So we're going to clear the wave as much as we can and I see an angle to kill this cannon. There is an angle. Let's try to clear the cannon first and maybe try to get some poke. I do have to clear a bit more. Right here, another one. Another one. I think I have a half freeze here. Okay, we have a hold. It's not a freeze, but the wave does hold itself in this position. And if we get six here, we may be able to all in the cannon, which is in like three waves. But he will hit six first. So what I'm going to do in this position, uh, this is where you normally ping for your jungler because you're in a pretty good position to gank the cannon. But the kindred is bot lane. So maybe we can tumble in for a poke and apply the strategy that I talked about in level one, where they're going to auto a minion and you tumble in a way where you're at maximum auto attack range and you poke them. And it looks like right here, if he walks up, I'm definitely going to do it here, 100%. Ah, he went for a melee minion. Right here, I can go for it. Yep, very nice. We got one right there. And we're just going for these tiny little pokes that we can find when his W is down, aka his empowered auto attack. You don't want to get, get hit by that, because that guarantees his W. And it seems like he's playing very safe right here. We do hit level 6 first. Gonna go quickly ward. 
And it looks like we'll just end up crashing the wave and taking another base again. As it seems like this guy did not ever find a timer to base. Terrible CSing. Oh, right into the face. Let's see if he goes for it here. Alright. So we crash the wave and now we take the base and we come back. And unfortunately, in all those scenarios, I wasn't able to find a full clean all-in on the cannon. But perfectly fine. Let's grab some items. Vampire Acceptor. As per usual. Boots. Pink Ward. And use my potion. Walk back into the base to get my potion back. And then leave the base. And we're pretty much full HP. When you use the refill potion in the base, you have to use it around over here. And the reason why you do that is because you gain more HP. Instead of just sitting there waiting for hours where you get to get natural HP regen. And as we come back, we're going to pop a pink ward right here and we're going to try to clear the wave while it's pushing towards us. If Kennen stays, we're going to try to all in him because this is the prime time. Why? I have items. He has nothing. So I'm going to look really aggressively right here to try to all in this guy. So we're going to start by clearing the wave here, which is what we can do for free. Tumble forward. Auto. And we're going to try a bit harder here. Another one. And I'm going to try here. And looks like we get a nice clean all in onto Kennen. And the reason why I was so adamant on going there is because Kennen had no items. He never based. He just had a D blade the entire time. So we decided to go go for it, even though it seemed a little shaky. But we end up finding the kill and we end up getting the kill. So right here, I'm gonna do a very high level strategy right here to base. I'm gonna base right now, all the waves pushing towards me, and try to come back and catch the wave as it's crashing into my turret. And I think I messed up because the wave is way too big actually. But let's just head out and see if we can get back in time. Ideally you clear a bit more, but if I stayed any longer, the problem with staying longer is the cannon might actually come back and stop my base, which is one of the worst things that can happen. But maybe I could have cleared two or three more minions and then took a base. But it doesn't seem terrible. The wave still pushed towards me. And we end up catching most of the mages in this scenario. The wave will now bounce back. And we are now doing a three wave cannon crash, which is very common in vein top lane. A three wave cannon crash essentially is, is you stack up, uh, starting with a cannon wave. The next wave that's coming is a non-cannon. And the next wave that's coming is also a non-cannon. That's the wave that you crash on. And then you crash on that wave, you have two options to continue hitting the turret or to base, which means the next minion wave that's spawning is a cannon wave. So if the enemy shoves it out, the cannon will soak up the tower shots and you'll get back in time to catch the wave. So we're building it up. We're on wave two right now. Next wave that spawn is a non-cannon wave. And then we're going to crash on that wave. We're going to ward about now. I think Cannon might be in this bush. Dodge the Q. And I'm going to... Okay, he's not going for the ward. So I lost the mage when you forever, that's fine. You can go for objectives when you crash this wave, but yeah. Pretty much we're here. We are on that third wave. And I... What is this guy doing? That has a lot of balls coming from that angle. He has to walk all the way around now, which means he'll end up losing a lot of minions. And what I'm going to do here is a very weird move. I'm going to contest the cannon right away in this bush. Alright, we trade a lot of damage. I wish my teammates were there to cover the cannon and to kill him. But it appears that there is going to be a fight here, so we'll follow up to the play. I'm gonna do a little trick here, where I go on the cannon instead. Oh, we got popped. No way, that's unfortunate. But basically what I tried doing in that scenario was I tried pretending that I was going into this fight with the enemy team here. But in reality, I fully turned for the cannon. The only issue in that scenario was I didn't dodge the cannon Q when I came out of invisibility. Which led to him having a bit more damage on me, which made me die a lot faster. But I'm not too bummed about it. The wave is pu still pushing back towards me, so again, perfectly fine. As long as you always leave the waves in good positions, even if you die very often, you'll end up noticing that you don't fall behind too much. Sure, you lose 300 gold, but the wave is still in a good position. 
The only way the wave's in a bad position is when the wave's pushing towards them and then you die, which allows them to freeze on you. And that is when you're really doomed. Because when the wave finally pushes out to you, you're down almost a level and a half on your opponents. And now you're frantically trying to catch up to your opponents, which is not a position you want to be in, which is why wave management is very important. But we're going to freeze the wave here and force the cannon to walk up. Pop the ward here so Silas can't gank us through the lane brushes. And and it has two options right here. Go roam and lose a ton of minions. Or walk up and try to clear the wave, which I'll try to poke him down. Try to all in him and see what happens. Because he has no ult in this scenario. Because he just used it to kill me. But it is coming up. He's on the dragon, so he's going to end up losing a ton of minions here. We're probably not going to get any plates this game because we are holding the freeze in this exact scenario. But I don't mind. Again, look at the CS differential. It's 86 to 60. Massive difference. 30 CS. Cannon's pushing mid. Again, we're going to continue freezing here. And the issue with Cannon going mid is now they're sharing EXP with Renekton. And no one on the enemy team is getting this EXP in top lane. So again, just keep freezing. No fear. And I'm going to keep holding the freeze by pulling the minion wave over here. And as you can see, the minions aren't hitting me, but they're still kind of following me. And that's the ideal way to pull a freeze. So that you don't sit you don't sit there just tanking the minions if possible. So Kennen is finally back after losing like three waves. I'm gonna try to kill him here. Oh, smokes. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, I'm, I'm griefing. <laughs> That's griefing right there. We're just gonna let the wave crash and chill. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, I am not particularly fond of the Kennen matchup. Because there's so many ways Kennens can play. They can play aggressively and not get punished because of their E. They can play full defensively, and you're sitting there having to work for all the trades to make them happen. And essentially, he's very flexible, while you aren't as flexible on Vayne. That's why this matchup is not... It's not bad, but it's not fantastic. So let's catch the wave here and maybe we'll find an angle to kill this guy. Very annoying matchup. I don't think I'm going to go for anything here because no one's showing on the map. And just farming their top side. They might be doing a cheese near my brush or just farming bot side, the enemy jungler. Not quite sure. Alright, he runs away because there's a ward in that brush. And as you can see there, it's a high demonstration of how the cannon matchup works. They have the option to fully play defensively and not get punished. And if they're winning, they have the option to play full aggression, which they still can't get punished because, again, they have their E to run away. So again, a very flexible matchup when it comes to facing off against the Vayne. But it is what it is. You just have to deal with it. But back onto the map we go. Just pushing waves. Make sure waves are in good wave states, and let's try to reach the mid game here as cleanly as we possibly can. It looks like there appears to be some fighting going on. Let's ping the ward for 5 gold, and we'll catch the wave that Kennen pushes in here. And we'll see what he does. He's probably going to rotate over to see if he can help, or take a base, is my guess. He's probably taking a base here, which is fine. Because now I can push top and then rotate to the Herald that Kindred can start very soon. Fortunate. So we're going to clear this top wave, then rotate to the Herald if she's still doing it. We want to get the 100% resource first, if possible. Which is the minions in this case. Then now we rotate for the... Nope, it's already gone. For the 50% play. But our 50% play will be this tower, because we're not going to get it. We're going to get some tower damage. And when Kenny comes back, we're probably going to back off here. Unless Kindred gets some nice cheese. Okay, Kenan shouldn't come back to lane. We'll get it a bit lower for the Herald and focus on the minions. Alright, we get the tower. And let's continue pushing these minions. And there appears to be a TP top here. Which is confusing me, but I'll just eat him away. And we'll simply walk away, grab the turret, call it a W, and we'll take our base and prepare for this dragon. AKA not grouping for the dragon. If you're new here, 
Ladies and gentlemen, you already know me. I am not a fan of rotating and helping your team. I am instead a massive fan of, of continuous side laning and creating pressure around objectives. So, as we can see, I based at around one minute before Dragon. And now we're going to try to put ourselves in a position where we're around here. When the dragon's about to spawn in 10 to 30 seconds, those are good timers, right? It's probably gonna be around 10 seconds when we get there, maybe. Or I think my timer might be off. But we'll start pushing. And essentially, the enemy team has two options deal with you, which means they're gonna lose dragon because you run away or you kill multiple people. Or rotate to the dragon. If they do that and they send five people for dragon, then you get top turret. So, right here, I'm gonna push. Dragon is spawning in about five seconds. So, let's see what they do. They send Kenan down there. And now I get to push. So they have decided to contest the dragon. Which means I can push this for free. And they're they're losing a numbers advantage situation. Which is one of the worst things that can happen in a solo queue game. Is when you send multiple resources to an area and you still lose it. While the enemy team does not commit that many resources. But as a result of that, that's because we have really fed a Kali. So I get to push top for free. So let's continue pushing. And then we're going to rotate to their jungle after because Kennen's going to re react to top lane when he spawns. And farm their camps. So Karma's here holding the wave. Kennen will be there in a second. Let's check their camps. All those are gone. Wolves are up, so we'll grab the wolves. And just slowly get ourselves further and further ahead. And let's see if there's something mid lane. Nope. If Silas land the E, then you'd rotate over. Since not, you go back to top and catch the 100% resource. Which is minions here. I might be getting collapsed on by multiple people. I'm not quite sure. So we're going to clear the wave here. And then we're going to take our base and call it a day and grab our item. So yeah, we're getting collapsed on by three guys. Take our base, grab Rage Knife. And come back onto the map. The next objective is Baron. But the issue is it's my colleagues heading bot lane. Normally in this scenario, I love going opposite side objective, right? Which is what we did earlier during the dragon. We went to the opposite side objective, which was top lane, because the objective was dragon. But in this scenario, since the colleague is all the way deep bot lane already, I will rotate top, which is the right side objective, which is the Baron. In this scenario, and still play to the best of my ability. But the issue is, is you can't pressure much. Because everyone's on that side anyways, so you'll end up like pushing and then backing off. Which is the issue with going to the side with the objective. So we're going to push here. Push, 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 push. Looking mid, maybe I have to rotate. Nope. Go top, catch this wave. Cannon's going to rotate, ping MIA, MIA on the cannon. So they don't get cheesed by him. And then push in the top minion. And as you can see, nothing special has happened this game, right? We're kind of just farming, playing waves, and we have a massive lead just through pure farming. I didn't do any crazy plays. 175 CS, highest CS in the game, highest level in the game, maybe minus the Akali that's fed. And this is just pure wave management and pure macro movement. And a little bit of getting carried, but again, you don't complain when you get carried. So here we go. Kennen is dead, Silas is dead, we get to push top for free because no one is responding to us. There appears to be a fight here. Maybe I can help out. Kindred didn't pop her ultimate. Is what it is. Maybe we can kill her here. Eat her into the wall. Break the tether. And then finish her off and grab the top tower. And we're going to grab the minion wave here. Oh, we're going to run. That's what we're going to do. We're going to run. We run away. The reason why is because the enemy team has spawned. Every single one of them. So Akali seems to be heading bot lane again. Obviously, I could ping her and try to get it. But I'm just going to set go top lane. I believe everyone is going to play around the dragon spawning in a minute 40. Because it doesn't seem like Baron's really on the table for anyone. So this is technically a form of opposite side objective uh, where you're banking on the fact that everyone's going to play for dragon soon. So again, we're going to head top lane here. Continue pressuring. Nothing changes, guys, every single time. You push the wave. 
you, you, you evaluate, do I rotate mid or do I continue pressuring? If you rotate mid, then obviously rotate mid. But if you continue pressuring, are you allowed to pressure? Who's on the map on your side on the enemy team? You have to handle three guys at once, right? And can you even handle three guys at once, right? Two guys at once, right? You have to look at the map. Karma mid. Silas uh, mid. Renekton bot. So who's top lane? Only Kennen, because I just saw Caitlyn Karma. Can I handle Kennen? I can probably handle Kennen. I'm two levels up on him. So we're going to push top lane here. And continue pressuring. And it seems like they're calling pings to Baron, so I just rotate to Baron. Whenever my teammates call pings to Baron and I'm on that side, I am probably rotating like 90% of the time just to get on that objective. In this case, the Silas is dead, so why not? Rotate to the Baron, grab the Baron. And the next objective will be Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. So I'll be off to side map again, pushing top lane. Ow. So let's get inside the pit here, go on this side, clear the Baron, and then we'll join the fight. Do I have to pop alt here? Sure. And she is gone, ladies and gentlemen. Dragon is up, but I'm not going to rotate there. Instead, I'm going to farm the Grom. Continuing to pressure, even when the entire enemy team is dead. Because I'm confident this Kendra can do the dragon on her own. If she can't do it on her own, then I would rotate and help her. Like if it was like an Amumu or something. Not, not Maybe not Amumu, but like... A really bad jungle taking jungler. You can probably think of one. Ivern or something. So, push top, push top, push, 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 push. Maybe Silas comes to kill me. If he does, it is what it is. We'll just simply outplay him. Dodges E2, uh, kite him, and then chase forward when he tries to run away and go from there. So, simply E him into the wall. Very straightforward. When he E's towards me, he's going to W me. Don't let him land his E2 by jumping into the minion wave where he can't land the E2 and we'll simply kill him, take our base and grab our wits end and head back top lane. So right here, if you ever run into the scenario where you're winning but there's no objective, so which side is the opposite side objective right now? It's probably going to be mid bot because there is a bot tower we haven't gotten yet so everyone's going to play for that. So the opposite side objective is technically just top lane here because the main objective is mid and bot siege. So that's just a little thing that you can peek at and adapt to when there's no objectives coming up. As you can see, nothing's coming up for like four minutes. So we're going to push top here and continue to side lane pressure. If they send four dudes for me, I'll take all four guys at once. If they send Kennen for me, I will simply just kill Kennen. He doesn't have the damage once you have Wit Send anymore. If he didn't get fed, and he's not fed, right? If he's fed, you're obviously still gonna die even if you have Wit Send. You'll have to wait till QSS before you can fight him. But in this scenario, he's not that fed. So let's continue pushing top here. And the enemy team has two options. Deal with the objective side, which is mid lane, which is the dragon objective, quote unquote, in this case. Or deal with Sa you, Saskio. So my teammates are fighting, I'll let them be, let them all hash out there. And it appears they all die, they all came in front of me and just died. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, like this is an example of a game where I didn't do anything special. I just continued to side lane and created pressure and got a ton of EXP and I'm really far ahead. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys drop a like. Hit the sub button and have a fantastic rest of your day.